Good evening and welcome to Evening Prayers on this Thursday the 21st of November. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Great are the deeds of the Lord. They are studied by all who delight in them. The hands of the Lord work faithfulness and justice. All the commandments of the Lord are sure. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our opening psalm this evening is Psalm 147, reading verses 12 to 20. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. He keeps your gates strong. He blesses your people. He keeps your border safe and satisfies you with the finest wheat. He gives a command to the earth and what he says is quickly done. He spreads snow like a blanket and scatters frost like dust. He sends hail like gravel. No one can endure the cold he sends. Then he gives a command and the ice melts. He sends the wind and the water flows. He gives his message to his people, his instructions and laws to Israel. He has not done this for other nations. They do not know his laws. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our Gospel reading this evening continues in the book of Luke. Luke 17, verses 20 to 37. The coming of the kingdom. Some Pharisees asked Jesus when the kingdom of God would come. His answer was, the kingdom of God does not come in such a way as to be seen. No one will say, look, here it is, or there it is, because the kingdom of God is within you. Then he said to his disciples, the time will come when you will wish you could see one of the days of the Son of Man, but you will not see it. There will be those who will say to you, look over there, or look over there but don't go out looking for it. As the lightning flashes across the sky and lights it up from one side to the other, so will the Son of Man be in his day. But first, he must suffer much and be rejected by the people of this day. As it was in the time of Noah, so shall it be in the time of the Son of Man. Everybody kept on eating and drinking and men and women married, up to the very day Noah went into the boat and the flood came and killed them all. 
it will be as it was in the time of Lot. Everybody kept on eating, drinking, buying and selling, planting and building. On the day that Lot left Sodom, fire and sulphur rained down from heaven and killed them all. That is how it will be on the day the Son of Man is revealed. On that day, someone who is on the roof of a house must not go down into the house to get any belongings. In the same way, anyone who is out in the field must not go back to the house. Remember Lot's wife. Those who try to save their own life will lose it. Those who lose, lose their life will save it. On that night, I tell you, there will be two people sleeping in the same bed. One will be taken away, the other will be left behind. Two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken away, the other will be left behind. The disciples asked him, Where, Lord? Jesus answered, Wherever there is a dead body, the vultures will gather. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Quite a hard hitting reading, isn't it? And it talks about us being ready. Ready for when Jesus comes again. I belong to a committee uh, that gathers every half term um, for a city council called Readiness for School. And we talk about those thousand and one critical days in a child's life from birth to age five. And part of our job is to ensure that they are ready for school, for that transition is huge for a little one. And we know, don't we, that any transition, any change for some can be really, really difficult. So imagine how difficult it was back then when Jesus said he would come again, but, and there was a but. So this passage offers a thoughtful reflection on the urgency of Jesus's final teachings and his focus on preparing his followers for both his departure and his eventual return. Some things that came to me as I was reading this scripture. It begins with the Mount of Transfiguration. And this was a pivotal moment where Jesus' divine nature was revealed to Peter, James and John. Witnessing his glory alongside Moses and Elijah underscored Jesus' fulfillment of both the law and the prophets. This experience was meant to strengthen the disciples for the challenges and confusions they would face as his crucifixion approached. That can be the same for us today. We prepare, we think we're ready for everything, but we need to have experiences in here that will enable our challenges and our confusions to be met. In his final days, he was facing certain death and Jesus focused on what mattered most, teaching and preparing his disciples. His teaching during this time emphasised eternal truths, his second coming and the need for readiness and faithfulness. His example challenges us to consider our own priorities and the legacies that we leave behind. Then later on in the scripture, there's a comparison between Noah and Lot. The comparison to the days of Noah and of Lot highlights human tendencies towards self-centeredness and moral decay. Despite warnings, people in those times ignored God's call to repentance. And this parallel serves as a warning for us to avoid complacency and to prioritise our spiritual readiness. This makes us think of modern attitudes and prioritising temporary concerns, idolising material things and 
seeking comfort over truth, urge believers to evaluate their lives. Are we storing up treasures in earth or in heaven? Are we aligning with God's perspective of the world? And then it says, doesn't it, that Jesus' return will be swift and unmistakable, likened to the lightning across the sky. And this image makes us think of the need for constant vigilance and faithfulness. His first coming was marked by humility and grace. His second will bring justice and the fulfilment of God's kingdom. So, where do we stand? Are we living in a way that reflects trust in Jesus and readiness for his return? Or are we sometimes consumed by the fleeting priorities of the world that we live in? This scripture invites us to embrace in Jesus' promise to return while challenging us to live within a sense of purpose, aligning our lives with his will. It is a call to readiness, repentance, and rejoicing in the assurance of his second coming. When we prepare our children for transitions in their lives, we make sure that they are ready but we too must make sure that we are ready for the coming of his kingdom. Amen. Heaven is in my heart.
and now we come to a time of prayer. Blessed are you, Sovereign God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise for ever. In the beginning you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. To dispel the darkness of our light, you sent forth your Son and firstborn of all creation. He is our Christ, the light of the world, and in him we acclaim as all creation sings to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, blessed be God for ever. Loving God, you illumine the night and order the moon and the stars. Grateful for your presence among us, we ask that you remember us as we pass through the shades of night and journey towards endless day. We ask this through Christ our light. Amen. And now we come to our cycle of prayer for this East Midland Synod. And tonight we pray for the ministers, elders and members of our churches in Northamptonshire. We continue to pray for a peaceful resolution to the situation between occupied Palestinian territory and Israel and other zones of war and violence and humanitarian distress in the world. And we think today of the Ukraine and the part that Britain has paid today. We ask you, Father God, to bring peace to this world, a world that you love, a world where we live a world where we want to be ready for you when you come again. We pray now for names of people who have been asked by loved ones to be prayed for. And so we begin our list as we pray for the Reverend Samuel Salangwe, for two and a half year old Noah, and his family as Noah begins a multi-week chemo treatment for his cancer. With the Reverend Jennifer Millington for Christopher, her son. With the Reverend Sue Powell for Andy, her son-in-law, and for Claire and Emmy. With David Gratrix for his daughter, Ruth. For Hilary Sentence, Secretary of our former Burton Joyce URC and her family after Hilary has been taken ill. And with the Reverend J. Phelps for Sue Phelps. And we continue to pray for the Reverend Patrick Lidget and for Helen and the family in their care and concern for him. For Elaine Dre, Secretary of our former URC, Ermin URC and her pain and anxiety as she awaits surgery. For Deacon Emily Hocrook, recovering after a stay in hospital. For Graham Garleb, for his continued recovery after surgery. For Roger Allen and for the Reverend Ruth Allen in her care and concern for him. For Barbara Turner, for, for Holly Moorside URC. For the Reverend Helen Wakefield Carr in her ongoing cancer treatment. For the Reverend Hamish Temple for recovery from surgery. For Jean Schenk and for the Reverend Brian Schenk in his care and concern for her. For the Reverend Graham and Vera Maskery. And with Moynia and Stella for Father Andy. We continue to pray with Ankatea for Kelly in his journey to recovery and for Laverne in her care and concern for him. With Teddy for his group home friend Jerry and with the Reverend Claire and the Reverend Brian Davison for Susie, their daughter. For Cheryl and for Prince and the family in their ongoing care of her. With Andy for Mike, his dad, and for Liz and Ruth in their ongoing care of him. For John and for Irene as she continues to look after him. And for Margaret Davis, Secretary of our former URC, Rose Hill, 
who is very poorly. And for Andy, a husband to Caroline and father of three girls who is undergoing treatments for cancer. We also pray this night for those who grieve, especially for the Reverend Gillian and her daughter Alice Poucher and all those who grieve for Gillian's husband, Neil. We pray for Scott, Jan, Gail, Dawn and the family as they grieve for their mum, Margaret Walkinshaw, whose funeral is to be tomorrow. We continue to pray for Susan Hunt and all who grieve for her husband, Peter Hunt. And we continue to pray for those who grieve for the Reverend Jim Gould, especially for Cathy. And we pray for those who grieve for Don Buxton, especially for the Reverend Maureen Buxton. Father God, this night there are many who are sad, many who are suffering, many who are traumatised, many who just feel one degree under. We pray for each and every person who feels that way. May you lay your healing hands upon them and help them to feel stronger and better. But Lord Jesus, we also rejoice with those who feel great. Those who may have finished treatment and are feeling so much better. Those who have had mental health problems and who are beginning to see the light. Father God, we rejoice with them. And Father God, we pray for each other who are gathered here on the screen this evening. We ask you to bless us all as we go into this night and reach a brand new day. Give us the wisdom and the foresight to be ready for you in everything that we do. Amen. And now we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, as on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Even though it is still November, we eagerly await Christmas, which is just around the corner, a time of celebration, a time to ponder and to think about that great gift that came as a baby, that lived as a man, that died for us and who will come again. Many years ago at our church, we sang a musical called Rumours of Angels, which was written by Graham Kendrick. And I share with you tonight because it fits so beautifully. White horse, be patient, be ready. Look up, the Lord is near.
May we continue to be patient, to be ready, because the Lord is near. The Lord bless us with his grace and fill us with his peace, this night and always. Amen and good night. <laughs>